Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at Fedora Workstation KDE. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. Also, if you'd like to follow me on my socials or become a patron to the channel, those links are down below. First thing we're going to do, so let's go open up the website. If you want to look at Fedora or are contemplating downloading Fedora, go to getfedora.org. Basically, it states right off the bat, welcome to freedom. Fedora creates an innovative, free, and open source platform for hardware, clouds, and containers that enable software developers and community members to build tailored solutions for their users. you got different kind of distributions you can download here. Everything from workstation to server to the new emerging Fedora editions, which is the core OS, which is an automatically updating minimal container-focused operating system, and then Fedora Silverblue. It's an immutable desktop operating system aimed at good support for container-focused workflows. And then, of course, they got Fedora Magazine, different spins that you can get, and just basically all the information you'd want on Fedora. So if you want to check that out, go to getfedora.org. So I'm going to close this out. When you download Fedora and throw it on a USB or put it in a virtual machine and open it up, this is the desktop you're met with. You've only got one panel. It's on the bottom. you got Show Desktops. You got date and time. You got your hidden icons, which covers K organizer, notifications, clipboard, night color, virtual keyboard, keyboard indicator, and then KDE Connect, which if you're an Android user should be really important to you because with KDE Connect, you can sync your Android phone with your desktop or your laptop. That way, if you get text messages or anything like that, they pop up on your desktop. That way it makes it easier. You don't have to always be picking up your phone. You've got your internet connection. You've got USB. You've got battery, audio settings, and networks. Let's close out of that. And then over here, you've got settings, Discover Software Center, Dolphin File Manager, and Firefox we just saw. Let's go ahead and open up settings. Out of all the Linux desktops, KDE has the most robust options for customizing your desktop to the way you want it. When you open up, you start out with Appearance. Go to Appearance. Over here, you do have some themes that you can switch to. If you don't like any of these, you can go down here to get new global themes and change those. But I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Breeze Dark and apply it. Now we have a dark theme, and then you also have Plasma Styles, which will give you here and what your Plasma Styles are. When you open this up, that's your Plasma Style. So if I go over here and I clicked on Oxygen and hit Apply, you can see that the bottom bar has changed. It's almost transparent. And then when you open up, you got that transparency. It's almost like a glass look. Oxygen is still really popular, and I really like it. I'll go ahead and leave that. Then you can change colors, window decorations, fonts. And like with all of these, if you don't like your options you have here, you can go get new plasma styles or get new application styles, whatever you want. Get new global themes. You can click on that. There's thousands of them out there to choose from. Fonts. I always adjust my fonts up just because I need them a little bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and go to 13, click OK. Let's apply that. And all the fonts are bigger over the entire operating system. And then you've got icons. Cursors, splash screen, and then back up to application style. Let's go back to global theme. You've got workspace behavior, window management, shortcuts, startup and shutdown. This is your login screen. If you would like to change your login screen, all you got to do is come over here, click on it, hit apply. It changes it. And if you want to get different ones, you can just go down there and download a different one. Auto start. This right here will list any apps that you've given permission to auto start. Now, if for some reason you find out you've downloaded an app and it's auto starting by itself, all you got to do is come over in here, find it. And if you want to take it out of there, you can take it out of there. Background services and then desktop session. Then you've got search. Then there's way to personalize it. You can set up notifications, users, regional settings, accessibility, applications, KDE wallet, online accounts, user feedback, connections, settings. There are just a plethora of different ways to customize KDE to the way you want it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. I want to right click. I want to look at changing the wallpaper. This right here is what you get out of the box. Fedora 34. It only looks like you get to change it once. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Close it. And as you can see, you get a beautiful looking wallpaper. Let's take a look at the Discover Software Center. When Software Center loads up, this is what you'll see. I'm going to move it out to the middle of the screen. Right here, it gives you different options to download some of the most popular applications. You can also come over here and do a search. Let's just uh, Blender. Hit enter. And there's Blender. You can go ahead and click on that, install it if you want to. All you got to do is come up here and click the install button. 
so this right here is where you would get all of the applications that you'd want to install. You've got installed in settings. You can come over here. It shows that you've got Fedora flat packs testing, Fedora flat packs, and then missing backends, flat pack backend, package kit backend, and snap backend. If you wanted to, you could install all of those and have those over there in your settings. And then, of course, fetching updates. That would take a while. It's going to come back and tell you you've got updates that you need to install. Once that's done, you could come over here and install them from there. Then, of course, you got application add-ons and then plasma add-ons. You can come over here and get all kinds of plasma add-ons so you can change the look of your desktop. Let's close that. File manager. This should be Dolphin. Slide it over here. And I've already made the fonts a little bigger so you can see it. But if for some reason you would like things in here to be a little bit bigger, I usually go through here like recents. I don't need those. Just right click on recent. Click hide selection and it disappears. And then you can right click down here in this open area. Icon size is set on small. I'm going to go ahead and bump it to large. That way I can see it a little better. You got your usual suspects over here, home, desktop, documents, downloads, videos, and then your folders here. If you want them bigger or smaller, there's a slider right here. You can slide it up, make them bigger, slide it down, make them smaller. It's whatever you prefer. That's up to you. It's your operating system. Do with it what you want. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Go over here to application launcher. And you've got admin, you've got development, you've got games. It's got board games, card games, tactics and strategy, graphics. You've got Gwynview, Color Paint, Ocular out of the box, Internet, Aggregator, Firefox, K-Mail. I'm going to be doing a K-Mail video here shortly because I think this is an email client that gets overlooked way too much in the KDE environment. I think it's just as powerful and a lot better looking than Thunderbird. Conversation, PIM, Sieve Editor, Multimedia, you've got Dragon Player. Alyssa, Juke, Camoso, Office, you got LibreOffice out of the box. Then you, your settings, we've already went through, system, utilities, help. There's just a lot of different things you can do on Fedora, Workstation, KDE. I'm going to come down here, let's edit panel. Let's go ahead and make the panel a little bigger. Run that up to 50. That's just another way you can customize. You made your panel bigger, your icons get bigger. That's not to mention the widgets you can add. You click on Add Widgets. And this over here will populate with all kinds of different widgets you can put on your taskbar or add to your desktop. Let's say you wanted weather on your desktop. Just click, left click, hold, drag over, drop. Then you can configure it. Location, let's just pick a location from NOAA. Let's just say Dallas, Texas. Search. Uh, Dallas Love Field to be fine. Select. Apply. And there you go. I've got weather right there in a widget on my desktop. And we gotta move it over here. There you go, close out. Now you've got weather, if that's something you want. Not everybody would want something like that, but if you do, there you go. There's thousands of those widgets. There are so many ways to customize KDE. And having a solid Linux distribution like Fedora underneath it, you can't go wrong. Tell me what you think of Fedora KDE down in the comments. I try to communicate with everybody that leaves a comment. Do me a favor before you go. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. Doesn't cost anything. And at the end of the day, if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, those links are down below in the description. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next video.